Welcome to my business, property business lockdown rescue series of webinars where I'm here to help you, to help you during lockdown. What can you still be doing to trade? In today's or in this uh, specific webinar, you'll hear me interviewing Ajit Kundi. He's a mortgage broker and I'm asking him lots of questions about how mortgages are going at the moment in the current uh, environment. So don't miss it. Hope you enjoy. So very good evening to everybody. Let me go and unmute Ajit. Morning Ajit. Or evening Eden. Evening, Ben, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm very good, thank you. Um, we've got quite a few people logging on. I'm just going to give it one minute uh, and then we can get going. As per normal, what I'm going to do is chat with a Jeep for several minutes and then at the end of that conversation uh, we're going to open it up for question and answers uh, you can either type in the chat box or you can pop your hand up and we'll come to you and you can ask the question direct so um, i said um, this is our fifth day of doing uh, lockdown rescue webinars um, 30 to 45 minutes every day on um, what's going on out there at the moment during lockdown. How can we carry on business? Can business carry on as normal? Or how are we going to get around things? So, um, Ajit, how's things been uh, out there in the market compared to normal? What's going on? Hi, Ajit, can you hear me? Uh, sorry, it's broke up then, sorry, again, sure. um, So yeah, I said, um, how's things go, uh, going on out there at the moment compared to normal? Um, what can people still do at the moment that uh, they might have to do slightly different to a few weeks ago, um, but they can still move forward with what they're trying to achieve? Okay, so um, it, is, it is a different market out there. Um, it has changed uh, quite a lot. Lenders have all got quite, um, quite nervous. We've seen lenders kind of leave the market um, and decide not to lend. We've seen certain lenders with where applications are in and they've remained frozen. And lenders have chosen not to move them on to underwriting uh, and on to other stage <coughs> as of yet. Excuse um, me, just one second. Let me get in a drink future, of water. Um, I'm just... <coughs> I just want to get a drink of water, sorry. Okay. Sorry about that, Jeep. Do you want to carry on? I'll just have a to get some. Yeah, so, um, <coughs> so I'll get into this, as I was saying, um, starting off with um, sort of certain members leaving the market who were privately funded, and the ones that are propped up by banks or our banks themselves are still operating and are still lending. Um, a lot of them are capping their CVs at 70, sorry, at 60%. Um, so even for buy seller, they're capping it at 60%, which is causing a few problems. Um, even if you've got applications in, um, they're adjusting the LCVs to 60%. Now, a lot of the banks, uh, specialist lending, which is where we focus on, um, especially with mentees and um, people that come through claims that way, obviously, they are honouring applications that are in, so and then there's are honouring if you are 80% LTV on a buy to and currently in progress on an application and have had the valuation done, they are honouring that, which is a good thing, but they are few and far between. Um, so it's um, it's changing every day as as with the government guidelines <coughs> changing every single day, and um, but there are opportunities still. There are lenders who are looking to lend, so the mortgage lender being one of them, um, TML, they are. 
lending um, their full normal buy to their book, including HMOs and uh, multi unit blocks, which is a good thing. I don't anticipate that happening for too much longer. So um, it'd be good to sort of get applications in if you are looking to, to get some deals done. Um, TMW as well, the mortgage works who are part of Nationwide are still lending on buy to let um, up to 75%. They're not doing 80% anymore um, and they are not doing HMOs unfortunately. So um, there are two main lenders who are lending at the moment all the way up to, uh, who are taking new applications and lending up to 75%. <coughs> um, the mortgage lender lending up to get another full book, so 80, 80 amount of value and HMOs. So, um, I won't, I won't show you it is quite bleak out there um, in terms of high street, in terms of main street lending, uh, mainstream lending. Um, but the messages from or from people that are in the market are that this is temporary. It's not talking about being like the 2008 crisis when all the banks went bust and because that was caused by them themselves. This being a health issue, it is all temporary. All we're going to see from all the lenders is we have temporarily stopped taking the applications, or we have temporarily maxed LTVs to 60%, or we've temporarily taken HMOs off, off our, off our uh, new business book. Um, we do anticipate coming back um, again, a bit like with everything at the moment. We just don't know the exact timings on that. It all depends on, on how the, uh, the infection rate, I suppose, how that seems to. To progress. If that's if we hit the peak next week, I'm well, hoping it does, then they can start to tend to get the the main bit of business back out and start to get solicitors back up into the market and start to get things moving again. Um, but as of right now, Main Street lending is very, very tight. Um, bridging is still out there though, there's still a lot of bridges have left the market, but there is still bridging out there, there's still 70, 75, and 80 percent loan to value bridging. There are still Bridge lenders who will do against GDV um, is what that GDP is is, um, is a conundrum right now because no one seems to know where house prices are right now. So that is something to consider. But there are lenders who will do sort of 60, 70, 80 percent of GDV as well. So um, that space in the market is is good because the reason why that's quite big at the moment is because people are looking at short term buyers and because of what I just said in terms of everyone seems to think it's a short term period of sort of reduced lending. So people are looking at bridge financing for six to twelve months to try and get them get the deal over the line and they know that they are going to be refinancing once the market <laughs> picks up back up back up again. And have you had any um, uh, valuations come in at all? Um, over the last few days, um, I haven't had any value. I had, I had one come back um, this week. Residential. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you're fine. Uh, sorry, I said I had a valuation come back. Um, it's half a million pound valuation in London actually, all day long. They came back. Um, this was about ten days ago. It came back at four six four. So no. not a massive decline there. Eight percent. Was that a percentage um, reduction? Which is deliberately? Paying larger down valuations than that. Was was that um, a specific? Sorry, was that a specific down valuation by a certain percentage to come in with that weird number? Uh, no, I don't, it wasn't. Um, it was. I think he was just putting some metrics on there. We didn't get the full. We challenged the back, but they haven't come back into the, the reasons why. They just said current market trends and current market dynamics mean that <coughs> the number was come through at um, at four six four. Um, so eight percent is a bit of a bit of a weird number to come back at, but but uh, I think that is that's a, a smaller decrease than than I think the rest of the market is going to come in at. So whilst valuations are on hold at the moment, people are talking about doing deals and saying. Or what sort of values it look like? I think once the values go back out, I'm able to go back out again, maybe in the next sort of week to ten days, hopefully. Then I do think we're going to see larger than that one, like especially outside of London. I'm looking at maybe even 15, 15, 20 percent, which is what people are talking about. Um, I don't know if that's what people are seeing or people are going on to Glen. If you can, if you heard anything on on that on that, but people lenders are talking about those sorts of numbers. Uh, that's why I've got you here, really, to talk about that. Um, I've had a mixture um, t today. Obviously, you're on here. 
yesterday I had Nick Hughes of the Experience Investor, so she sees it from the investor side. Um, on Monday I'm interviewing Maxine, who's been an estate agent for 27 years, to see where it's been coming from her. And then on Tuesday I'm interviewing another investor who's in a middle building um, or, or planning that pension going through. Sorry, mate, it might be my interpretation, but it's just breaking up a bit, sorry. Uh, he's in the middle of uh, getting a planning application he's just put in this week to build six flats within a church he recently bought so um, trying to get a mixture of seeing it from all sides of the fence um, my bridging company who I use for development stuff uh, I've said everything's fine everything's perfectly they'll, they'll do it uh, new build developments they'll do from plans rather than going and doing a site visit um I really uh, what i wanted to do primarily is answer people's questions um so if anybody has got a question please pop your hand up uh, and uh, or please feel free to type in the type box um what your question is so that i can uh, Read it out to you, G. Yeah, yeah, no problem, no problem. Um, so yeah, I think it, it, it is. It's, a, it's just a one and done. Lenders are, are really starting to get a bit nervous. Like I said the, the high street, the main, the mainstream lenders are getting nervous. Um, a lot of the asset backed and um, a lot of the private funded uh, lenders are starting to pull out of the market and not taking new applications. So. Um, there are opportunities, like I said, bridging, as, as Glenn said, there are options on bridging and there are well, the ways that we can get things sort of over the line uh, over the next few weeks. Um, people are talking about holding back at the moment and waiting to, to, to go in, back into the market once it sort of comes in again, once they just think deals will be better post um, when people get back out again. Uh, it's, just, it's just a mixed bag at the moment. It's difficult to know. What the best strategy is, but there are ways that we can look at to get things over the line. I said bridging is one of the main ways that we would get things over the line, um, or we can go straight to the high street lenders and certain of them, like the TMW, the mortgage lender. But we do think that they are going to start to restrict lending pretty soon. Um, I was on the phone to an underwriting manager at Fleet Mortgages um, today. She was saying to me that they were lending to 75 and 80 percent loan to value in Fleet, and they have now had their funders tell them to oversee every single application that comes in now, even if before it goes to underwriters and before it goes to offer, even if it's at past underwriting stage and there's a pull back on, on a lot of the lending at the moment. So, uh, yeah, uncertain times. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's, it really is what is going to happen at the end of this and how long is this going to last? We really don't know. Um, <clears throat> For me, again, as I mentioned before, property property prices are very much supply and demand led. Um, but when we come straight out of this, how long is it before people are going to start looking at buying properties again? Um, you know what? You know what? Uh, the job prospects. I think a lot of companies will take on staff fairly quickly again once things start getting back to normal because they're going to need staff probably take the opportunity to prune some staff that weren't the best staff. Um, but yeah, who knows, maybe what I'll do is I'll try and get hold of a uh, friend of mine who's an economist and get his bounce on it. So yeah, let's have a look at some of the questions that are coming in. Uh, someone's just saying about our signal, not very good at all. I'm bouncing back. Uh, I don't know, Chris. Um, nothing's changed compared to, to normal. Sorry, Clayton, it, it just it, it was just really um it was like you quite a bit of robotic. I couldn't really hear what you said then. Yeah, I'm getting comments about that. I'm just reading one. Um right, um right, uh, this is from Mark Plumley. It says I've a resi to six bed HMO in Bristol in final development stage just painting and doing furnishings. We were due to have it valued on the day of lockdown by Connells for a Kent Reliance mortgage. This was stopped and Kent Reliance have now stopped their 85% loan to value mortgage. Uh, currently on a bridge until October, what would I, you suggest I do next? 
Okay, so yeah, camera lines have, have completely stopped lending at the moment. Um, if you're looking at 85% loan to value, I think it's very difficult for you to get to 85%. Um, I'm not sure what the what the profitability is or any holding out until um, the next sort of couple of months. And you said you've got a brief till October, so if you can hold out the next couple of months, um, I'm not sure how much that's going to do to your to your margin. But um, the mortgage lender will will loan and uh, will do day one remortgage. Um, at the moment, like I said they're doing 75 and 80 percent loan to value mortgages, so they are an office, They are um, a lender we can go to. Um, that's someone you can speak to about going to uh, taking uh, taking out the bridge using the mortgage and then doing that at the moment. Yeah, and I, <clears throat> I would suggest Mark that you hang fire for the next couple of weeks. I mean, yeah. if you are ready to refinance, you've got to make a decision whether you want to try and. <coughs> go for the 80% that's available at the moment or leave it and hope 85% comes back fairly soon um, what you didn't mention is whether or not you're relying on that 85% to take out the bridge I wouldn't have thought so um, but you're probably relying on it giving you your cash back on top of the mortgage but um, at, at the moment the good news is you've got quite a lot of breathing space until October to get things sorted. Um, Ajit, do you know of any bridging companies when uh, bridges are coming to their end of term, whether they're extending or penalising or what they're doing? At the moment, they are looking at... Um, at the moment, if, you, if you're coming to the end of term now, they would obviously look to see what they can do for you and look to extend terms. Um, if we're looking at going, we can look to go with another bridge and take out a bridge if that's the, if that's the, the uh, situation. But I would suggest you speaking to the lender at the moment if you're coming to the end of the term within these next three months because they will allow leeway and they will allow you to do extend terms, I would imagine, um, as it currently stands. I haven't had come to me and asked that just yet, but if we speak to, to lenders directly, they are being very flexible on a lot of things at the moment because of the government uh, directive. Yeah, I mean, bridging companies are notoriously <clears throat> officious when it comes to cashing out on deals that don't finish on time and putting in penalties and all that type of stuff. Um, so, and I know most bridges, when the rules changed um, about penalties a little while ago, they reintroduced higher rates but heavily discounted. The, yeah. you know, if you go past term, the the higher rates kick back in, or if you miss a payment, the higher rates kick in. Um, and that, you know, that can be three, four times normal rates. Uh, have you heard of what, what the bridges like that are doing? Are they cashing in on the situation or are they being lenient? At the moment, they are, they, they are cashing in. They are, they aren't, they're not a contract to contract as it comes down to it. I mean, I, I think they're not looking to, I haven't heard of anyone come to me and say that they've had oh just automatically extended on their terms. I mean, I've got a, a bridge um, that I'm doing at the moment comes to the end in May, um, and the client has contacted them and they said that that's the terms of your contract. If, if you want to rebridge, we can talk about extending your terms potentially. But at the moment, you come to the end at the end of April, the start of May is when your um, I think it's about ten thousand pound fee you've got to pay. So that's when it's going to kick in, and contract is a contract, and that's how it sticks. Yeah, well, okay, thank you. Um, um, from Amrik, uh, any buy to let lenders doing desktop at the moment surveys in lieu of physical surveys? Um, no, 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 not that I've seen. All of them at the moment are um, they are holding fire. What they've decided to do is sign off all the paperwork uh, and, in essence, get to offer subject to valuation. Okay, so I'll say that one more time. I lost you there, Ajit. Can you say, uh, say that one more time? Before, it's, uh, sorry, yeah, I, just, I was saying that at the moment they're not looking to do, uh, to the moment they are doing, the signing off the do documentation or the paperwork and almost going to offer subject to valuation. It is changing on a daily basis. Um, the problem with Bicelet is it is all down to the asset and it's all down to the fact that it's all, they need to look at that rental valuation and they need to get out to look at it. It's difficult enough to do that without um that's where bridging comes in and that's why bridging is a good one because they can essence just do a drive-by and have a look at it 
um, and know that he was looking to do get it over the line and you know, take indemnity insurance out and things like that. So um, in terms of just straightforward buy to let, for the moment there's no one who's doing um, doing desktop valuations right now. Okay, cool. <clears throat> um, Jay said, say the market crashes 15 to 20 percent would be the best strategy going forward. I'd say, Jay, let us wait and find out whether that happens or not. Um, always we adapt to the market and market forces and can normally do it fairly quickly. Um, as long as people with portfolios uh, have got their rent income um, and their mortgages are their mortgages, um, nothing's going to change there. Obviously, with interest rates dropping, that's going to help um, landlords to a certain degree from that perspective. Um, I'd, I'd start putting offers slightly lower and uh, I think it's those with the biggest kahunas are going to win here. Normally, when there's a drop for whatever reason, um, the, the big long-term um, uh, investors come jumping in and pick up stuff. People like Duke of Westminster, I know, buys whenever properties drop to a certain value in a certain time um, and then fill their boots for a few months and then go, you know, go back to normal again. So who knows what's going to happen. We will adapt as it goes forward. But I, I would, um, I, I think this is like a 12-week thing and probably in six months we're going to look back at it and... Um, you know, wondered what all the fuss was about. Um, I just think it's too short a period of time to affect the whole of the UK housing market for any significant time period. Uh, Neil said, should you be worried if you're on a bridge at the moment and the bridge ends in like three to six months? I think, Neil, if it's ending in the next three months, then potentially that's an issue if it's six months, I think you'll be cool. Um, let's uh, let's hope ride out the next four weeks, and you know we'll probably <coughs> talk to uh, Ajit again in the next uh, next two weeks and see where things have gone since today's conversation. Um, uh, Flora said, "I have a buy to let interest only, which ends in May." What advice should I do? Flora, what company is it with, please? Because, you know, if it's a mainstream lender, I'm sure they're going to extend it. Um, is it coming to the end of 25 year? Uh, what is it? Can you please let us know? And we'll take that from there. Jay says, or should we be gearing up to invest in the market? No, full well, the market will bounce back in 12 to 18 months. Um, that, that's where my head is Jay, I think it'll bounce back before then. But, um, let's see. Uh, uh, <laughs> okay. Different conversations about my voice on the signal this evening and the best one yet is from Justin who says, then you keep sounding like one of the clangers. <laughs> um, Mick Simpson said, how do you set up a bridging loan? Okay, yeah, please. Uh, okay, so um, you come to a broker like myself, um, and uh, we will go to the market, um, have a look at the best deal for you to understand purchase price and uh, and length of time that you need it for. Um, find find the best deal that we can. But yeah, there's the best way to do it is to go to a broker um, who specialises in the uh, the bridging industry. Cool. Uh, Sandro says he didn't catch the name of the speaker. Um, we are seeking, talking to Ajit Kundi. Ajit's been in the mortgage market for some time, but I've been dealing with his family, his dad, for probably for would it be 30 years now? Yeah. Somewhere around that. So, um, and yeah, one more. Yeah, I th I'm not sure whether you were around when I was buying my first few properties. Um, and your dad helped out because I had four properties all at the same time going back in the uh, 80s. Um, right, do you expect Resi two or five year fixed rates to reduce in April, May to follow base rate uh, reduction? Uh, 
Um, I actually don't expect that at the moment. Um, base rate reduction has been been into quantitative easing um, to help sort of the NHS help large large firms or large industry. Um, so I'm actually talking about lenders talking to me about increasing rates to fund the mortgage holiday that we see um, that everyone is, is after, and quite rightly so. Um, if you qualify, I suggest you take that on board because it's very rare that the government will ever legislate to give you money or give you time off your mortgage. Um, so in order to fund that gap, um, three months of millions and billions and billions of pounds that they need to find, um, it actually looks like rates will, will slightly increase um, in order to fund that the, the current situation. So is what is the government doing mortgage holidays and are they doing it on buy to lets or just on reses? Uh, they do on everything, uh, anyone who needs it, uh, in essence, and anyone who qualifies for it. So um, there is a sort of a, a 20 minute, 20, 30 minute conversation that you have with your lender directly. You have a chat with them. Um, I mean, some of them have moved to online actually as well to ease the burden, um, but you need to give a reason as to why you need it. Um, majority of people are going to qualify quite quickly because they are on, they've been furloughed. Um, so therefore they say that I, I'm not at my work, I'll get 80% of my paycheck, therefore I need to get a, uh, I need to get a mortgage holiday. Um, other landlords are obviously saying things like obviously my, my tenant is taking the three month holiday that I'm allowed, that they are allowed to take from rent, so they can't afford my rent. Um, I therefore need a break in my, in my mortgage payments. Um, so it, it is, it's quite an easy thing to get. From what, from what I've been told, um, because we don't do it directly, you have to go direct to the lender yourself rather than actually come through to your broker. And um, how is that going to affect your credit history? Um, it's, it's, a, it's a difficult one to, to actually comment on at this present moment. Um, it shouldn't affect it, in essence, because it's been legislated for by the government. Um, you're talking about in these next three months for it to be if there is any sort of missed payments lenders will then look back and say well obviously it's not it's the, it's the holiday therefore you you're entitled to that so um it's going to be something that you're going to have to retrospectively go back and check i think we, everyone's going to have to go back and speak to experian whoever the credit you, you purchase your report with from um and get that adjusted uh, and make sure you get your the correct paperwork from from the lender when you do that, ask them to send it out to you either via email, but most likely through the post uh, that you do qualify and you have been given a payment holiday rather than just switching off your payments, make sure you speak to them and get it in writing that they have um, given you a payment holiday for three months um, yeah. as per government legislation. And if you do get adversely affected in your credit and send that through to the credit agencies who will then fed it off your file. Yeah, and they're going to have to be fairly switched on as well, aren't they? Um... Right, uh, Mark just repeated a question. Did you say TML will offer 80% at the moment? Sorry, Glenn, I'm not sure if that was to me. I can hear any of that. Um, did you say that TML will offer 80% at the moment? Yes, so they said they do. They said they're honouring all of their... Um all of their mortgage book and um, all of their offerings, all their products are still available as it stands. So that is eighty percent. Okay. And at the moment for land development, how many percentage at the moment will the lender lend for land purchase? Again with land, um and then you know quite well as well yourself, it, it's it's a difficult one because each each deal is is bespoke to what you're looking for. There's not like a generic product list to go through and say, well, this would be um point eight percent a month or whatever. It, it is quite bespoke as to what sort of loads of value you're looking at, how much you can put yourself, what you're gonna be doing with the land. Um so again, that is still because a specialist that is still open a bit like the bridging, there's still lenders who are looking to lend on that. Most of them are so privately funded um, or equity funded, uh, equity funded um, firms who are looking to to lend into this market because of the, the margins that they can look for. Uh, so definitely, again, a bit like the bridging, speak to a, a broker, speak to speak to us, speak to our firm, uh, First Financial. We can definitely put these deals together for you because there are packages, there are um, lenders out there who are looking to lend. 
on uh, on land and on development as well. Okay, okay. Um, question from Stephen Pyfinch: Has the holiday le- lending been affected? Uh, yes, everything's been affected. Um, it's not particular that the holiday let has been affected in any way differently to anyone else, but everything by to let, everything residential, commercial, everything's been affected. Okay, sure. Uh, just trying to find the next comment. Most of them seem to be about. Uh, Joe said, can hear you now. Thank you, Joe. Um, Gareth said, it's nice. I think it's the amount of people online in my house at the moment. Okay, all right. Um, Okay, let me see if I can go. So Andy Lamb. Andy, you're live. What was your question for a Jeep? Hi Andy. Andy Lamb, can you hear me? Okay, let's come back off of Andy. Let's see some other Stephen's got his pan up. Stephen Franklin, you're live now if you want to jump on, if you can hear me. No, we definitely. Oh, there you go, Stephen. Hiya, Glenn. Hiya, Glenn. I can hear you. Good. Glad you can. There seems to be a bit of problems tonight. Um, just, I'll, I'll just, uh, can I just throw a quick question in? You can. Go on then. And we'll finish with you now. Right. Yeah. All right then. Um, I have a, a, a buy to let mortgage just going through at the moment. Uh, it's been accepted with Barclays and it's due to complete. It's taken them longer than normal, but it's due to complete on the 15th of April. Um, they've sent me a, um, an invoice for the amount that I paid the solicitor. Does that mean that this deal will will automatically go through, or is there a chance it get pulled at this late stage? Okay, so um, there is, in most likelihood, it will go through. Um, a lot of the high street, particularly, so Barclays, Santander, Halifax have said if anything is at offer stage, we will honour it and we will go through at at the value that we've offered um, and the amount that we've offered. So. It sounds to me that that one will go through as it should. Yeah, that's good then. Uh, I have a nasty habit of uh, coming out smelling the roses. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Nothing wrong with that. Okay. <laughs> All right, so um, here we have Jay with his hand up. Let's go to Jay Ahmed. Hi, oh, Jay, you've got your hand up. Um, you're on. You need to unmute yourself at the moment. If you have a question for a Jeep, please feel free. So I'm mute and far away. No, okay, let's go to Lade who's asked questions most evenings. Uh, Lade, over to you. What's your question? Hi, Glenn. Sorry, I haven't really got a question. I was just hoping I could uh, give you a call quickly after the session. Um, I just got something important I want to speak to you about. It's regarding the Ramsgate property, if you don't mind. Um, can we do it on Monday because I've got something going on straight after the webinar? Okay, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. thank right. you. Brilliant, thank you. Thanks. Okay, um, thank you very much, Ajit, for joining us this evening. Um, no I think probably, maybe even um we'll have a conversation towards the end of next week and if things have dramatically changed in any way or slightly changed in any way before next friday perhaps uh, next friday we can uh, jump on again seems to find it very easy to find speakers at the moment nobody seems to be committed to dates so they're going out in the evenings or they've got pre-arranged things going on so uh and it is one good benefit from it that there are a lot more people or, or a lot of people that just don't have anything else to be doing at the moment other than uh, and that's another reason why i'm doing these is because um, 
out kids do something to do during lockdown so take care everybody